Salam Alaikum, Your Excellencies, Highnesses, Ladies and Gentlemen. I'm here today to talk about Al Misfakbal, Mustakbal, Al Mustakbal, the future. I have here a magic future device. Okay, I want to give you a short demo of the future is already here. See what the device says. The future is already here. We just haven't paid enough attention. Yeah, well, that wasn't very loud. I'm sorry, but I use this device when I travel. It translates in real time in 50 languages. It can be used on a mobile phone or just like this. Well, this is science fiction becoming science fact. I can talk to the taxi driver in Oman or in India or in Indonesia, right? As long as I keep it simple. This is what technology tells us. We can do this, but it's not like a human. The people back there in the booth, the translators, that's not the same as this. Right? And how long will it be before this becomes like that? A long time. Right? And do we need it? Right? Do we really need technology to become like humans? I mean, we're living in a, in a world where the future is happening every day. There's nothing more dated than the future. There's also uncertainty. I made a film on this, how the future works. So I play a short sample. Uh, you should have a look at the website, howthefutureworks.tv. Uh, we just published it about six weeks ago. Our argument is the ultimate job is to be human. When you look at this, what's happening today? Technology and humanity are coming together. Very scary but also amazing. Right? Think about solving diseases, virtual learning, right? all the benefits that we can have from technology. And then think about all the challenges of technology, forgetting ourselves, addiction, right? globalization, automation. I mean, automation is a bigger force of society than globalization. Right? Any job that can be done by a computer in the next 10 years will be done by a computer in the next 10 years or even after that. That is academics, researchers, drivers. Right? If your job is routine, computers will learn it. Take this job here. In this video, you will learn how Turn to react the, the case of an unhappy customer in one of our stores. O atendimento ao cliente é fundamental e é necessário aprender a lidar com clientes irritados e descontentes. I couldn't find an Arabic-speaking soundtrack, unfortunately, but it's obviously Portuguese. But this artificial intelligence is translating a lip-syncing. Right? I mean, this is like a truly lip-syncing. And of course, this is a demo, right? This is like a Google demo. We all know it could work, but you know, when will it actually work? But we have this already here, right here, uh, Credit Suisse, right? I am Amelia, and I work for the Global Service Desk at Credit Suisse. I help employees all around the world to keep their computers, smartphones. Many banks in the UAE have this, right? And here is Samsung with a project called Neon. They call it the artificial human. Right? This is an avatar that's made up by Samsung called Neon that goes on the mobile phone or customer service and looks and acts like a human. I mean, this is convergence of humans and machines. What are we going to do in the future when the machines do everything? Right? What is the job of education going to be? So I want to show you first 10 technological game changers. They have been mentioned earlier before, but I'll bring you all 10 at once, so I'll give you kind of a future shock. Right? These are all happening at the same time. So cloud computing. Deep data, the Internet of Things, quantum machines, language recognition, 3D printing, the blockchain. Our kids have to understand these technologies. But they should not become technology. Right? Our future is to understand and use technology like a tool. You know, if you're a carpenter, you can use the hammer to kill somebody. If you are an artificial intelligence, you can use it to kill people. 
a tool is a tool. Right? What do we do with a tool? We have to understand how to use it and how to not use it. Right? And the tool can be dangerous. Right? We have to think about what happens when everything becomes data. Right? Very powerful right? when everything becomes artificially intelligent. I've said many times before, you know, data is the new oil. And I think it has been echoed here in the UAE as a future idea right, of the new oil being data. AI is the new electricity. I mean, we're talking about, McKinsey says, roughly a $100 trillion value chain, a change in the global economy. And of course, finally, machines can learn. Right? Machine learning, deep learning, that means that machines can find patterns that we wouldn't understand. But does that mean the machine is anywhere close to human? No, we, we have a lot of patterns that we understand that machines will never understand, or never in the immediate future. Right? That is because a human looks at the world like this. Right? We have hundreds of channels. Like if I speak to you later, maybe it takes 0 0.4 seconds to recognize the other person. In more, in all of the senses, computers don't do that. Right? Computers look at all the data and say, oh, yes, if you leave three hours before departure to get to the airport, you're probably going to be on time. But what if it says three hours, so three days before departure? Are you going to be more on time? And it wouldn't know the difference. So this is really important. We keep in mind the difference between humans and machines. And we talked about this earlier, the Industrial Revolution, the fourth Industrial Revolution. Now it's the fifth Industrial Revolution. Right? Artificial intelligence, machines that can think. And I know what you're wondering now, right? Everybody's wondering about this. Will the world be like this? You know, first the machine kind of helps us, then the machine takes us, and then it flicks us away. Right? Do you believe that's the future? If your job is to be a machine, you will be replaced. If you're at the checkout in the supermarket, you're doing nothing but pushing the button, you're going to be replaced. The machine will learn this. But any job that requires any, even driving a car, right, making a moral judgment, improvising, conversation, right, yeah, difficult for machines. Right? Machines are now understanding language, like I showed earlier. In a couple of years, we're not going to sit here and type away on our mobile phones or on our browsers, we're going to speak to computers. We're going to say, hey, I'm ready to go to the Bahamas. Right? And the computer will know how to book my ticket. We're going to speak to machines like there were people. Imagine if you're a student. You're sitting uh, somewhere. You're saying, please tell me the difference between Swiss democracy, American democracy, and democracy in New Zealand. Right? Yeah, you can look that up on Google today. But in the future, the computer will speak to you. Just like straightforward, right? The computer will also have an opinion, right? Yeah, you've used Alexa, right? Amazon Alexa or Google Home, where they can actually say, no, wait a minute, it's different, right? Think about manipulation. What will that mean for the future? Here's the bottom line for you and for all of us. It could be heaven or it could be hell. Because the future is extremely powerful. You know, technology will give us all the tools. So what are we going to make out of it? Right? So this is what's happening. Technology is now in the process of taking the things that make us human. Emotions, understanding, design, intuition, imagination, and sucking them into a deep digital vortex. Right? Free will the understanding of judgment. Right? And computers are saying, you know, this is all human stuff. It's complicated, you know. It's creating a problem. Really what we want is we want just, we want this logical world, right? But the world isn't like this. This is the world of machines. This is not the world of education, right? This is just data, algorithms. If we keep this up, we're going to end up here, right? As many people have said before me, if we become too much like a machines, we become useless. 
This is why the more we want to be in the future in terms of success, we have to understand the machines. Right? But we should become more human. And what does that mean for our future? Why won't we be useless? This is what machines do, right? Machines are good at stupid, commodity, monkey, donkey work, right? Checking data, compiling stuff, finding patterns. A doctor that's using a computer for, for intelligence right, will always say, well, you know, that's probably true, but I, I have an opinion. Many of you who are using Google Maps for driving, right? I think all of us sometimes are saying, no, that can't be true. You know, this is not the right way to go, right? And why do you know that? Right? Do you know more than the Google AI? Right? Well, you see the world like this, right? And machines are going to give us a world of abundance. They're going to make things cheap. Anything we can think about this in the future, we should not compete with machines doing routines and creating an abundant world. Right? We have to use that. I always say, if you work like a robot, you will not work in the future. If you learn like a robot, you'll never have a job to begin with. You know, when I went to school a long time ago, I learned like a robot. You know, I was downloading information. I learned Greek and Latin and Hebrew and Arabic by downloading information. Right? I wasn't improvising. I wasn't being creative. Right? And it was helpful, but today, this can't be our future. Right? Anything that can be digitized and automated will be. Right? Anything, let's include our own jobs, like me as a futurist. You can talk to IBM Watson. Right? And you can ask IBM Watson, what is the Mustakbal of Switzerland? Right? You get an answer. <laughs> you can talk to the machine. Right? What is my job going to be in the future? This is the answer. Right? I made up this word. It doesn't exist. Right? It is the opposite of algorithms. And I wrote a book about this. I think the first row has a free copy here called Technology versus Humanity. And basically, if you take these, right, the human things, right, think about this being attempted by computers. Can a computer be creative? Yes. Computer can write a song. Computer can write a book. Right? Will it be a book that you want to read? Probably not. Right? But it can simulate creativity. Right? But does it have mystery? Does it have imagination? And what will our kids need in the future the most? Right? Will they need to learn how to program? That would always be a benefit, right? I mean, I wish I could program. <laughs> but will programming save our kids in the future from the world of machines? No. Right? It will be a helpful tool. This is what they have to learn. Right? Our intelligence is a lot more than just one thing. Research has shown roughly 10 or 12 different kinds of intelligence. Emotional intelligence, social intelligence. Right? In the future, the research has always shown also that women, for example, have more emotional intelligence, right? more EQ, different skills for the future. Let's have a look at what that means in the future, right? looking at things like intelligent assistance. We should not worry so much about AI as to what it could do today, this is a long-term perspective. I think the future is about machines assisting us, intelligent assistance, right? It's IA, not AI. Right? And look at this chart here. Right? All of the work in AI or IA is all just really computer stuff, right? Custom ID, billing management, credit scoring. Take a look at this chart. Amazon is the master of automation. Do you see how many people Amazon has hired last year? Right? 200,000 people were added to Amazon. But Amazon is the driver of automation. This chart is even better. Right? Have a look at which jobs are going to grow because of AI. The human jobs. And which jobs are going to decline? Transportation, storage, manufacturing, public administration. 
the, lo the jobs of logic. So what does it say for our future? Where are we going? If you take a machine and you have a machine read all the books about philosophy, I used to uh, be a student of philosophy, right? IBM Watson can read a million books in one minute. So I put all the philosophy books into the computer. Does it make the computer a philosopher? I think he would basically say no. He's read all the books, but is he a philosopher? Data and information is not the same as knowledge. It's not the same as understanding, and it's not the same as wisdom or purpose. Machines can have some knowledge, but can they have understanding? Can they see the context? I think this is very important for us to think about. That's why I say our ultimate job is to be human. In 10, 15 years, we're going to sit here, we're going to say, well, many of our old jobs have been taken over by AI, by machines, but look how many new jobs we can create. Did you know how many people work in social media? Didn't exist 10 years ago. 21 million people. How many people work in sustainable energy in 15, 20 years? 100 million is the estimate. So to me, that doesn't look all that bad. I'm looking in this direction and saying, well, if humans can do this, machines usually do this, right? Moravec once said, machines, things that, very, that are very hard for humans are easy for machines and vice versa. And this is going to be true, I think, at least until 2050, until we reach what's called the singularity. Keep in mind, when you're looking at machines, this is really what's happening, right? Machines can read the obvious. They can look at your face and they can say, oh, Gert is angry. But they have no idea what angry is. They can't be angry. Very important for us to understand, we are the least aware of what our minds do best. Marvin Minsky, the founder of AI. This is what we have to create in the future when we're talking about education and jobs, is the handshake between humans and machines. The collaboration, right? Humanity on top of technology, not technology over humanity. Right? This is a very important distinction. So it goes about ethics, it goes about values, it goes about design, all the things that we have in the future. Let's not get too obsessed with this idea that we can be understood as a machine. I think that's interesting, but what about this? How do you teach your children passion? Do you go to get an MBA at business school and learn passion? Unlikely. Right? As an MBA, do you learn curiosity? If you're lucky, depending on where you go for your MBA. Most important thing is machines don't do relationships. What is most important for people? Ask yourself the simple question, right? Relationships with other people, right? Engagement, experiences. Not data, not information, yeah? Not even knowledge, right? Relationships. So this is something we have to teach our kids. We're going into what I call a new renaissance. Right? We're going into a future, Leonardo da Vinci, right? The Vitruvian man, Vitruvian woman, but now we're surrounded by technology. Now we have to reposition, and we have to rediscover what it means to be human. I call this the Renaissance. We have to go away from this, taking the human out, to putting the human back in, right? to rehumanize education. Music, ethics, understanding, history, sports, arts, and technology, right? Let's not think about for a minute that if everybody was an engineer, the world would be okay, right? There's nothing worse than people who only have intelligence, but nothing else. Right? It's something we have to think about. So I'll wrap up how to do the future in a nutshell. Let's not think about ourselves and our students like this, right? 
We don't insert information. When you think about your husband or your wife, you don't pull out a JPEG and say, aha, it's my wife. Right? It's a, a lot more complex than that. <laughs> so resist the machine thinking. Understand exponential, live linear. Last point, transcend technology, not humanity. This is where I'm not with the singularity transhumanism crowd that you've seen many times on these stages before. I don't think we should transcend humanity. We should use technology to get more human, human not less, as a tool. Because our biggest challenge is not that the machines will come and kill us. This is science fiction. It may in 50 years be an issue. <laughs> our biggest issue is that we become too much like them. We start thinking like machines. We lose our creativity. We lose our relationships. We have more relationships with our screen than we have with people. And it sells a lot of screens. Let me summarize. These three things right, are here today. Exponential, you've heard this a million times. That is technology. The next thing that's, that's happening to us, we have to think of the human things, right? Holistic business models, sustainable models, human benefits. Don't think for a minute that doing this is enough. Right? If you're a genius scientist, maybe this is enough. You, know, you can make a good living. <laughs> The six future principles, three technology, three humanity. And education must encompass all of those. You know, and everybody has different talents. Our kids aren't the same. You know, maybe my, my kids are more suitable for this. You know, 45% of what we are is genetic. We have to find out what that is first. In this future, the handshake between humans and machines, we're going to need different skills. World Economic Forum 2015, and now going to 2020. Right? Critical thinking, creativity, emotional intelligence, cognitive flexibility. Where do you learn this? Do you learn this on a road trip in India, or do you learn it getting an MBA? Right? If we offer an MBA, let's make an MBA in critical thinking. Let's think about where this is going. Right? The future of education is awesome humans, to use a good American word, right? and amazing science and technology. The two of them together, that's where we're headed. I want to start, uh, finish with a uh, sort of a mission statement I've used before. Let's put the human back inside of education. Right? Let's balance that with technology. Invest as much in humanity as you invest in technology. That will be a good future for us. Thank you very much for listening.